This video was sponsored by CuriosityStream, in partnership with my streaming service, Nebula. Hey, happy Friday. This week, NVIDIA announced their incredibly smart strategy for the future, China announced that they're getting really serious about antitrust regulation, and most of the internet announced that they're opting out of Google's new ad tracking system. As always, we also have a weekly quiz with 20 brand new questions to test your tech knowledge on. Get at least 15 answers right to pass, and welcome to the Friday checkout. Okay, my favorite new releases of the week are a bookshelf speaker from Bang & Olufsen that looks like an actual book so you can completely hide it, wireless headphones from Urbanista that have a solar panel built into the headband that supposedly charges them up to three times faster than they can discharge, next the Logitech Voice M380 which is a mouse that you can speak with for some reason to use voice commands, and finally two new Sony flagships which on top of the usual high-end specs and manual camera apps now offer the world's first variable telephoto lens. This means you can have smooth optical zoom levels between about 70 and 105 mm equivalents. That's really cool. You can find all the new releases of the week including prices and availability in the Crowd app and they get added almost hourly by now, so open it daily to stay up to date. And on to the new stories of the week we go. The most important tech event of the week without a doubt was Nvidia's GTC conference, where the company announced about a million different things, of which I would like to highlight their brilliant strategy for cars and data centers. First, the company is on track to becoming to cars what Qualcomm and MediaTek are to phones. Cars these days are rolling computers, and many already use various NVIDIA chips for things like processing data from their cameras. But NVIDIA plans to take this further by announcing first Orin and then Atlan in the next few years, which are SOCs or systems on a chip. Basically the central computer of the entire car that includes the CPU, the GPU, the memory, etc. The company expects the performance of these SOCs to improve at a very impressive 5x with each new generation, and on top of that, the company is also releasing Hyperion, which is a full vehicle kit that includes these SOCs and also the sensors, cameras, and software to power pretty much the entire car. This includes sensing the environment around itself or self-driving, the dashboard, the entertainment capabilities, etc. All of which can be continually updated with new software over the years. Of course, car makers can then still customize the system to suit their needs, but it really looks like cars are going to have a sort of Android and Qualcomm moment very soon, where car makers can just use standard NVIDIA chips and software for the fundamentals and focus on the optics and added features on top to differentiate themselves. And in the meantime, we as consumers might start looking at spec sheets to learn which chips our cars ship with, just like we do on phones. Second, in data centers, Nvidia laid out their three-chip strategy. Basically, the company's GPU and their CUDA software are already well known to power most high-performance computing tasks, especially those around machine learning, AI, and modeling really complex things like giant clusters of molecules, for example. GPUs with their many cores and massive parallelism are just much better suited for these types of tasks than CPUs, so pretty much all companies use them to some degree, and Nvidia basically announced that they're now going to offer the other two logic chips required to run a server too. One is a CPU called Grace, which uses ARM cores and NVIDIA's NVLink to create a much higher bandwidth between the GPUs and the CPUs than is currently possible with other standard CPUs like those from Intel and AMD, so you should get much better performance from these massive GPU farms. And second is a new generation of Bluefield, the company's DPU, which is basically a dedicated chip to handle all the data center specific processes like interfacing to storage devices, security checking, and network data transmission. These tasks are typically handled by the main CPU in a server, but offloading them to a dedicated specialized chip not only makes this process significantly more efficient, it also means that the need for really high power CPUs like those from Intel and AMD is getting reduced significantly. If you add all three of these together, plus the fact that Nvidia also wrote the entire software stack to run the various computing tasks on top of their new chips, it starts to look like Nvidia has all the building blocks necessary to become an end-to-end -end supplier of high compute data center tasks like AI. 
which puts companies like Intel and AMD into a less than favorable position. Okay, my second story of the week is the Chinese government getting really serious about antitrust regulation, basically for the first time ever. So over the last few weeks, China's top antitrust regulator has dished out fines to 34 different companies over violating their anti-monopoly laws. The simplest offenses range from doing monopolistic mergers and acquisitions without reporting them to the antitrust regulators for approval, resulting in smaller fines, while at the top we can find Alibaba, which was fined 2.8 billion US dollars, which actually represents China's biggest antitrust fine yet by a long shot. Alibaba in particular was fined for basically telling sellers that they would be cut off from the company's platforms if they dared list their products on competing e-commerce sites like JD, and the fines seem very educational in nature. The sort of context to understand here is that up until recently, China has been very relaxed and sort of hands-off with their antitrust laws, and as a result of that, most Chinese tech companies have been fiercely anti-competitive even more so than their counterparts in the West. For example, WeChat routinely outright blocked any links going to competing social platforms like TikTok. Payment providers like Alipay routinely forced merchants to only accept their mobile wallet or else they'd be banned from the platform, etc. All without significant repercussions. The party loves to make examples of companies and send a message this way, and the fact that pretty much every major tech company in the country all at the same time got basically a slap on the wrist, that really sends the message that okay, playtime's over, now we're serious about this issue. All right, and my last story of the week is Google's new Flock, or Federated Learning of Cohort system, encountering a lot of resistance. Now, if you don't know Flock, I've made a full video about it that you can see somewhere here, but to sum it up very quickly, instead of letting the websites that you visit track you for ad purposes, the browser itself using Flock tracks what you do, it then based on your activity puts you into a cohort based on your interests, and it then broadcasts that cohort data to pretty much any website that you visit, they can advertise to you based on your interests and based on what cohort you're in. Google recently started testing Flock on a small number of Chrome users, and while the company claims it is more private than other cookie-based trackers, pretty much every privacy-focused organization is saying hell no to them. The Electronic Frontier Foundation calls Flock a terrible idea, DuckDuckGo says Flock is bad for privacy, Brave and Vivaldi, two Chromium-based browser makers, have announced that they think it's privacy invasive, so they have cut it out of their browsers, and Mozilla said they had no plans to implement it into Fire Firefox either. That's pretty rough for a supposedly privacy-focused feature, and the really crappy thing here is that Google rolled this feature out to their early testers without ever really meaningfully telling them about it, and without letting users or website owners easily opt out of it either. There is no I don't want Flock tracking me checkbox in Chrome. The user would have to figure out that they have to disable all third-party tracking to block it, weirdly. And website owners would have to update their HTTP response headers correctly to opt their sites out. Most admins and users, of course, don't even know Flock exists, so either is really unlikely. This is just such a typical, hey, we run the internet, what are you going to do about it sort of attitude from Google. And this attitude is a big reason why YouTubers like me are just not very comfortable sitting back and just hoping that Google will not screw up our future as well. That is one of the main reasons we've teamed up to launch Nebula, our very own video streaming platform, and this week we have just announced MKBHD joining the platform. That's right, Marcus Brownlee, the tech YouTuber, is now on Nebula 2, together with a ton of other fantastic creators. We upload all of our regular YouTube videos to Nebula ad-free, I publish my tech altar videos there a day or two early, there are fantastic Nebula originals, including Wendover Productions' brilliant new documentary on how the cruise industry froze in Alaska. Asuka. Many of us upload extended versions of our videos to the platform, and fun fact, we have just started testing a new beta backend that makes pages load blazingly fast. Nebula lets us, the creators, focus on making great content without having to worry about demonetization or pleasing the algorithm. We own the platform after all, and it lets you, the viewer, focus on watching videos instead of being tracked or advertised to. Best of all, you can get access to it for free with a subscription to my sponsor, CuriosityStream, which itself is less than 15 bucks for an entire year. That's like barely more than a dollar a month. 
Curiosity Stream is of course the premier place on the internet for high quality professional documentaries from the founder of the Discovery Channel and they have a huge library of science, nature and history content to binge while you're stuck at home. Check both services out at the link in the description. Happy binging and I'll see you next Friday. Thank you.